What's up, everybody? My name is Sam. I'm uh, I'm bringing you something a little different today. I don't typically do review videos, but I've been using this for a few months now, and I wanted to bring you one. So now that you're here, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of jump around. I said I'm very new to reviews, so I apologize. But um, if that's something you like, then good. Let's start with the first thing. I'm gonna get it out of the way. The price. The price is, and I'm, I do have some notes here, so. Don't mind me, but <laughs> the price is it starts at two thousand five hundred and thirty five dollars for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. That seems like a lot when you just say the number, but when you think about what the specs that it has is when you think about what it can do as far as cinema cameras go, it's it's not a lot. It's it's on the low end of that spectrum. So that's kind of what drew me to the camera was that the price just was unbeatable. Now, let me get out of the way the things that I didn't use, just so I don't, I know you guys know I'm not touching on these because I just don't know. I didn't use the USB-C to record externally to a hard, uh, SSD. I did not use the DC power. I, I didn't have a need to, I wasn't tethering or anything. And I did not use the XLR mini ports. I, again, just things that I did not have a need for in what I shoot. So I don't want anyone to get their hopes up and think I'm gonna talk about that. As far as ports that they do have, let me go ahead and open these up and bring it closer to the camera. I don't know if that's gonna, there it goes. So it has an HDMI port here and then a microphone and headphone jack there. Um, I use all of that often. So it is something that you'll, that you'll use, especially having the headphone jack. I don't know why, but there are still some cam camera manufacturers that don't include that. So you can't really monitor properly. I use that nearly every time I shot just to make sure everything sounded good. Okay, now that we got things that I didn't use out of the way, I'm gonna just kind of go into the brief review, things that I loved about the camera. So it did have options for you when you shot. It had 6K in Blackmagic RAW, and it had 4K in Apple ProRes. Now I always filmed in Blackmagic RAW, that's just cause I am a DaVinci Resolve user myself. And if you're not, they do have a paid and a free version. So it's worth checking out with the free version and then going from there if you like it but I, I did that so I did shoot a lot of stuff in 6k even though my my uh, personal cards were not really big enough to handle more than a few minutes it was just it was worth it to to do it so keep that in mind now as far as the actual body of the camera goes it's a big it's a big camera let me again bring it up to the camera so you see it's big but I personally found that as an upside the reason being, I handheld most of my shots. So everything was kind of held like this or like this when I had a lens attached to it. And being a bigger, heavier camera at about 4.6 pounds, um, it's a little easier to hold it steady. Now I do have shaky hands. I don't know if y'all can see, like it's a little shaky. So I wasn't naturally, I wasn't holding it as steady as somebody else could, but it was nice to have that extra weight that I can lean back on. Another thing that I loved about the camera, and the biggest reason that this is what I went for, is the EF mount. So I'm going to show you for a second because I don't want to get dust in there. Yeah, it's not going to show you. It doesn't matter. It's an EF mount on there, which means that your existing Canon lenses, um, your old Canon Neo Sigma lenses, anything that had an EF mount will work on this camera. Right then and there, well worth it for me. Having that native support instead of having to get an adapter and yada yada, you guys know the process, it sucks. This was nice. Let's talk about the sensor a little bit before I, again, before I jump to the next, the next part, the sensor is a super 35 sensor. It is slightly smaller than a full frame, but it's bigger than crop. So it's, that's really not a problem either. I didn't find, I actually found myself cropping in a lot more than, than I wasn't because I, I needed a little bit tighter and I was able to get it by doing that. So that's something that that's really per person i didn't find a problem with that some people will the setting screen is amazing um it's very intuitive ever since it's on a five inch screen which i'll talk about in a second you can see everything inside of there so you don't really have any any issues with figuring out where something is because it fits so much on the screen that you just find it but while we're on that topic of the screen it does have a five inch screen on it built in which is insane that just in general, that's insane, but 
it's nice because you don't need an external monitor. You can still get one if you want one. They do make external monitors, Blackmagic does, but you don't need one. What I found myself doing, being that I shot this for paintball, the body protected the heck out of it. And I was able to just look down because the it does go straight down like that. I was able to just look down and hold it. So it, that was that was incredible. Um, I usually shoot everything in 60 frames per second, but it does range from 24 all the way up to 120. So for those of you that shoot more cinematic slow motion, you do have the option to do so. I generally shoot 60, so I have the option to slow down, and uh, it worked great for that. One of the things I loved about this camera, um, I loved the ND filters. It comes with built-in ND filters, three stops, I believe. And I use those all the time. Since where I shoot, I shoot in Central Florida, and it's it's bright, and then it's, then it's dark, then it's bright, then it's dark. Being able to just switch from my ND and just switch to the next one or go back was a life changer for my footage. It didn't affect it. Um, you'd be able to see it on the video, of course, but you just cut that part out. Um, or don't, it depends on the issue, I guess. But I didn't have any issues with that, and that was one of my favorite things, was not having to change up all my settings when I stepped to the left into a dark spot. Um, as far as the actual cards needed, you do need either a CFast card or an SD card. The SD card would be UHS-2. So keep that in mind. You do need those faster cards because of the faster read and write sp speeds on this camera. 4K, 6K is incredibly, incredibly big. You need, you need that speed. Um, that's really all I had to say about the actual camera. I, I loved this camera, and I said I'll toss in footage of me using it. I'll toss in B-roll, all that. But I just wanted you all to see the camera and know, you know, see, see what it's like and just go from there. So I appreciate y'all watching. Um, leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, I'll see y'all next time.